Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of U News, where you get U News. Our top story tonight is actually our first U News update. Remember this? Crypto.com accidentally transferred a woman $10.5 million instead of issuing a $100 refund like they intended. If the devil is in the details, then Satan runs the Justice Department. This week, courts in Australia began their depositions of the couple accused of... Well, I don't know what the formal charge is, but honestly, it was just taking advantage of a good thing. Anyway, the legal defense of the man who'd noticed the $10 million deposit was that he thought he had won a contest he'd seen via promotional email. My dude... The second that money showed up in your account, the real contest began to see how efficiently you could make that money and yourself disappear. Clearly, you lost. The Crypto.com representative denied any such offerings publicly existed for the company, and the court denied bail on account of a flight risk. We'll keep you updated here on U News as this story continues. Next up, who says working a government job would guarantee you'd be bored? Well, a whole lot of monkey JPEG holders now since the SEC launched an official investigation into Yuga Labs and the Bored Ape Yacht Club practices surrounding the distribution of its ApeCoin. Following this news, ApeCoin dropped 10% in value. The SEC is also investigating the NFT market to determine if it violates federal securities law. But don't worry, guys. I'm sure the SEC will start investigating Congress and the Fed's blatant insider trading of actual securities any day now. Moving over to a case of crypto meets animal activism, SushiSwap's coin fell 10% earlier this week because the project's new head, Jared Gray, was alleged to have had inappropriate relations with a horse. At first, people thought it was just a rude way to talk about his wife, but Jared has declared the horse-fingering rumor to be absolutely false. But in true degenerate fashion, a token was then launched named Sushi Horse and was proven to be a honeypot, and the dev made off with 20 ETH. I don't know who we should be more worried about. Acts of bestiality with animals like horses, or you fucking animals spreading rumors like this and launching honeypots. In seasonal news, it's October, and consequently the crypto market has taken the season of fall, literally. Chain Analysis reports that over $718 million has been stolen from DeFi protocols across 11 different hacks this month so far. The best part? We're only two weeks in. Over three bridges were breached this month alone from a BNB bridge exploited for $566 million, QAN's platform bridge hack for a million in their tokens, and $100 million taken from Solana's Mango Market Protocol. Damn. Bridges in crypto are about as safe as bridges in Ukraine right now. You know what, maybe instead of investigating idiots who paid six figures for a JPEG of a monkey, why doesn't the SEC work with some nerds to locate the people who've hacked almost a billion dollars in 13 days? Leave the idiots with the JPEGs alone. But maybe go report the horse fucker to PETA. For our last story tonight, they say one is the loneliest number. But what about 38 and 1.3 billion dollars? DApp Radar suggests metaverse platforms, Decentraland and The Sandbox, each have fewer than 1,000 daily active users, despite billion-dollar valuations. The protocols claim this number doesn't reflect the full story, as an active user is defined as someone who transacts in the metaverse, not necessarily someone who joins to view virtual events and interact with other users. But still, the largest number of daily active users ever on Decentraland was 675, according to DApp Radar. For the sandbox, that number was larger at about 4,500. Decentraland's creative director responded by saying something along the lines of, Nuh uh, we've had almost 8,000 users for our highest number, which is still a hell of a defense considering something like Spotify has a $16 billion valuation for its 325 million active users. For the life of me, I can't figure out why mass adoption of the metaverse isn't quickly sweeping the globe. Because after we spend all day in front of computer screens, big and small, we should all want to look this cool. That's all for this week's edition of You News, where you get totally unnecessary, useless news. I'm Tupac's of Coors, and I'll see you next week.